and what a great day to sew something wonderful. I'm Kia with Kia B and today we are going to be doing something super fun that was really well requested on one of our previous videos and so I want you to grab not your favorite cup of tea but your favorite tea vintage cup and come in a little closer. Let's take a look at the materials that we're going to need and what our project is today. As I mentioned in a video or two ago, I in the past have made vintage teacup pin cushion. I believe I even showed you this. It's absolutely adorable. This is a teacup that uh, when my great grandmother passed away, uh, we sent some flowers in the top of this teacup and they were beautiful. It was a really big bouquet actually for this teacup. And so I brought it home with me and I changed it into a little uh, teacup pin cushion. As you know, several things in my quilting studio are of my great grandmother's because she loved to quilt as well. And so I wanted to just really capture that in this little pin cushion. So I'm going to teach you how to make this today. It was super simple. Listen, and here's a disclaimer. I'm not a professional. I do this for fun. I'm just a homeschool mom who does this to keep her sanity. And I love making YouTube videos, but I am going to make mistakes and I'm going to just kind of wing it and I'm going to make things work for how I want the project to finish. So just a disclaimer going into this, I did things in this project that are just going to make the project work for the purpose I need it to work for. So keep that in mind as we go forward. Okay, let's talk about materials. So um, everything on here is really basically personal preference. So you need your favorite teacup. Today I'm gonna be redoing this one. It's like a little uh, quilted pattern of teacup and it's got a beautiful little pink rose with some green flowers on it. And so I'm gonna be doing this one today. And I have picked some beautiful pink gingham fabric. Look how cute this is and it matches the pink roses so very, very well. So you're going to need a scrap of whatever your favorite favorite fabric is to use with your teacup. You can make it match. You can make it not match. It really doesn't matter. It's all of this is basically um, personal preference for you. So a piece of scrap fabric. If you hear our kids in the background, they are joyously playing in the other room. It is a rainy day here and so um, they are definitely playing today. So um, you will see on this other teacup I used kind of a ruler fabric that I had scraps of and I really liked it. So the other things that you will need, some fusible batting and I use this fusible fleece and I'll tell you why. One, because it's a little bit more fluffy and two, I wanted my needles to, my kind of my sharper needles to go down into. And so you'll see as to why I'm gonna use this. So you need two um, circles of this and we'll talk about measurements as we get into the project. So you're gonna need some fusible batting. Don't go out and buy fusible fleece just cause I use it. Use whatever you have in your house. It really, honestly, it does not matter because your pins are just gonna go into it like a pin cushion. And if we're being super honest, I rarely actually use this as a pin cushion. I put three or four pins in it and it sits on a, on a shelf as a little sussy. So um, the other things you'll need, definitely some polyfill. Um, this is what makes kind of the cushion of our um, pin cushion. I know there are so many people who use um, different things. Like you can use birdseed, you can use almond shells or nut shells or any kind of shells. Uh, there are so many different things that you can use, but this is what I had on hand when I made this a year ago. And so um, that's what I'm gonna use it for today's tutorial. So some polyfill and let's see, you need a glue gun and glue stick, obviously. You need some type of fabric pencil and really that's only for marking your circle. So you'll need that. You will need some E6000. This is definitely optional if you, like I did a year ago, I made this pin cushion using a complete hot glue gun because like I said, I was just doing it for fun. It was just like an afternoon project. And so I hot glued the bottom of the cup to the saucer. Well, about two weeks ago, my three year old happened and uh, he knocked it off the table. And so it just came apart. If you use E6000, that won't happen. E6000, E6000 is made for glass. And so if you wanna do something more permanent, definitely use that. If you don't have it, don't worry about it. Just know that it makes it a little more fragile and if it heats up, it will definitely come apart. 
Um, the other must-haves are just a needle and thread. So we are just using some chenille needles. And so I've got one of those. And then as far as thread, it does not matter what color it is. So I'm using this really bright uh, turquoise. It's 100% cotton and it's a really thick weight of thread. It's a very, very thick and you want it to be thick. You don't want to use your 50 weight, your um, smaller weight threads because it will snap and we need it to hold a lot. So grab a thick thread. So you'll need that. Lastly is definitely just decorative personal preference. I tend to go a little crazy. So on here I have pearls, like a little strand of pearls. I have um, some lace. I have some buttons. I have just a random measuring tape that I put on there and a spool of thread. So whatever decoratively you would like to use is totally great. Today, uh, just out of my craft room, I chose some Lori Holt um, ribbon that we got in a sew sampler box. So I chose that. I've got tons of ribbon and just different little rickrack and things like that. Uh, I grabbed a little button pack that we got in our sew sampler box. It just has the perfect colors. And then I got a roll of teeny tiny little red rickrack that I want to kind of incorporate somehow. So grab like whatever, whatever makes you happy and that you think would add just a great little decorative touch to your pin cushion. So um, gather all these materials and we will show you step by step how this comes together. So let's take a look at the pieces and parts of this original teacup uh, pin cushion that I made. So basically these would be at the end, these would be glued together, but like I said, um, our son knocked it off the table, so it's a part. So I'll re-glue this later. But if we look at the pin cushion itself, so it's got some fun little decorative things, but let's look at the actual cushion. So I've got three pins just kind of stuck in there now. And I will tell you, I did not use fusible on this one. Um, and I wish I did, but I did not. So I basically just made a pouch of the polyfill and sewed that together and hot glued it into the cup. And then I put decorative things around it to just kind of sassy it up a little bit. I even added some to the side here. So what I'd like to do is do kind of the same thing with you today is to work on the cup and then work on the base and then glue those two things together, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and grab our cup. I've pulled my tray of supplies just close to me so that um, everything's within arm's reach. My hot glue gun is definitely hot. Um, and so let's do this. So I'm just gonna be working with the cup right now. So let's set the saucer aside. You wanna make sure that everything is pretty much uh, wiped out, wiped down. You wanna make sure that everything is really, really clean for when you put things into it. So grab your cup and your fabric. I've already cut mine into a circle. What you need is you need a circle that is about two inches bigger than the diameter of your cup here. And what that does is it's going to allow us to kind of make that pocket full of our batting and our fusible. So you'll want to cut a circle that is two inches bigger than the diameter of the mouth of your cup. So I've done that here. So let's lay that here. Next, you will want to cut your fusible batting. So fusible batting or fusible fleece as I've chose to use is bumpy on one side, soft on the other. So you're gonna want to take your right side facing down and the bumpy side facing the wrong side. You're gonna wanna cut this the actual diameter of the mouth of your cup. So what I did is I just uh, laid mine upside down, traced around it, and very, very rough cut that. I did not spend a ton of time on that. Um, just very rough cut that. Now with my fleece, I just laid this on top, took it over to the iron, and pressed that down. Okay, so now we've got that unit um, fused together. The next part is taking your thick thread. Now, like I said, the reason behind the more thick thread, why we're using that, is because we need to be able to pull and tug on our seam that we're gonna do, and so that way it kind of closes the, um, the whole thing up. So you're gonna cut off just a tiny little bit, and I did not grab 
I did not grab my scissors, so let me grab those. So you're gonna cut a pretty healthy strand of thread. You can always, always cut off the excess. So you're gonna cut off that and grab one of your needles. I've got mine here. I really like these needles. I believe we got them in a sew sampler at some point. I'm actually not really sure um, where I got these from. So uh, I might have to do this off camera because my eyes are not that great. All right, so thread up your needle. Now, here's my suggestion because I have done this so many different ways in the last few weeks prepping for this video and I have broken so many of these strands of thread. I feel like no matter how thick you use or anything, you could even use like some embroidery floss. A couple of strands of that would work really well. I think I did that when I made the original one. I kind of took a six strand embroidery floss and cut it in half and use three strands of it. So um, what you wanna do is you wanna tie three or four knots in the bottom, okay? Like I said, I am nowhere near a professional, okay? I do things the way that I know how to do them. Um, I've obviously never trained to do any of this and so um, I just kinda do what works for me. So I'm gonna put three or four knots here in the bottom of my thread as to try and allow the thread to catch on my batting. Or, I'm sorry, my fusible. So I've, I've got those here. Do one more. So that way it just kind of catches and doesn't do anything. Okay, so now if I had um, put this down, then it would be fused together. I'm going to start here and you're going to want to do it close to the edge of your fusible because you're going to bury this, but you might still see just a tiny little stitch. So that's why I said it doesn't really matter what color I, this is just happened to be like one of the more thick threads that I've had. So I'm going to push that through. Okay. And I'm going to bring it up to the top and I'm going to pull really, really hard to make sure that is not coming through. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the top and the tiniest, tiniest little stitch I'm going to take right there, not through both sides, just one, back into the batting. And that's going to start my, um, my stitching, okay? So that kind of just starts our thread. It, going through the, the fusible helps uh, when you go to cinch the, the pocket closed. It does kind of help not allow the knot to go through. Um, trust me, I have gotten all the way to the end and gone to cinch everything closed and it has popped on me so many times. We have tried to film this video three or four times already and um, so I've, I've kind of processed by error. So now you've got your needle in the middle, okay? You're gonna take about a quarter of an inch seam allowance all the way aside, all the way along the side, okay? So stick your needle in about a quarter inch away from the side. I hope y'all can see this. A quarter inch away from the side, and you are going to slip knot this all the way around. So basically, you're just gonna accordion like this, up, down, up, down, up, down, about a quarter of an inch all the way through, okay? Again, this typically would be fused down. And then you're just gonna pull that through, okay? I want you to go all the way around your circle, okay? So up, down, up, down, all the way around. Let me see if I can hold this up a little closer. So you are going to take this um, all the way up, down, down, up, all the way about a quarter of an inch all the way around your circle. You're just gonna keep pulling that through, okay? Then, once you get to the end, this will all be, and you're gonna, um, see how if I start to pull this, it's gonna start to, cr to ruffle this all up, okay? You're gonna make a nice size pocket all the way at the end. So you've, you've done this, all this stitching around, then you're gonna pull your thread all the way through, and it's gonna start to look like this. It's gonna give you a good little pocket through here. So let me go ahead and get this stitched all the way around. Let me get this fused down and show you what that process looks like.
Okay, so here I am. I've got everything stitched. And it kind of makes like this little bowl here. Um, and so we are just going to pull this. And as you pull, it's going to start closing your bowl, okay? I don't want you to close it all the way. I just really want you to get it to a spot where it's about the size of your fusible batting. So see how mine's starting to curl up a little on this side. I'm gonna pull about one or two more little good. There we go. Okay, so basically where everything meets together and is a good little ruffle here, I'm gonna stop at this point and I am going to tie a couple of knots in my thread here at the bottom. I'm so not a hand stitcher. Um, but I mean, I just kind of get this, get this done here. Okay. So take a couple of little knots here and a really secure your stitches. Then just to make sure that that thing is not coming out of there, I'm going to take a couple more stitches right here at the end and knot those up here. Just like this. Okay. Just like that. All right, then I can uh, snip off my extra little thread and I'm done with my needle at this point. So now you've got just this cute little, this little pocket, okay? Here's where you're gonna stuff with whatever it is that you choose to stuff with. If you choose to use birdseed or nutshells or whatever, that's totally fine. That's where you would do that at this point and you wanna stuff this as full as possible. Like I said, I'm just gonna choose to use some polyfill. I'm only gonna start out with a little bit and I'm just kind of going to really work on the outsides of my pocket, okay? So, and this actually takes a lot more polyfill than you would assume. So I'm going to work that into the sides of my pocket, creating kind of this well here in the middle. So that that's the only thing I have left to fill at the end, okay? So there we go. So I kind of filled that well in the middle and I pushed it to the outside. Now you think, wow, that looks a lot bigger than the um, entrance of your tea or the mouth of your teacup. That's okay. Because what happens is as we do this, we're going to squeeze it in there and it's going to form itself. You can make this as full as you could want. Um, I could actually really even put a ton more in there. So at this point, however fill, filled you want this, you're going to take your second um, your second thing of your second circle of fusible batting that again is the same size as the mouth of your cup. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this over to your iron iron and lay your fusible batting circle right on top of this. Now you think, why are we fusing polyfill? That's just going to melt. I completely understand that. I don't typically want to fuse the polyfill. I actually want to fuse this fabric that's around. What happens as I start to push, as I start to, let me grab a pin here, as I start to put pins in and push, do you see what's happening? This polyfill is actually just like coming out. So as I push, it's just making this all kind of, there we go. It's just kind of making this all come out. I don't want that to happen as I use my pin, um, actually as a pin cushion. So what I would suggest, and I actually already have one made, is taking your second circle and fusing it to the bottom. So if you can see here, I've kind of got my, my pin cushion, which we've already made, and I fused this other circle. What I did is I took my iron and I laid it on the sides here and really only pressing onto the fabric, getting the fabric to fuse rather than pressing here in the middle. You can just know that it might actually melt some of your polyfill. So this one is ready for us. So I'm going to put this one aside. So basically the only thing different, you're just going to lay your poly your uh, fusible fleece here and then start pressing all around there and it's going to make this. So now we are ready to fit this into our teacup. Okay. Like I said, we're just going to work with the teacup at this moment in time. We will get to the saucer later. So this is still pretty, I mean, I can move this around and shape it. So as I get it in here, you, you know, you can kind of see that there's little gaps and things like that. That's okay. Cause we are going to put decorative things around it. And really we're just doing, doing it for utility and decoration. So I'm going to set that right in the side here and just kind of dry fit this. So I actually really like that. I like that I've got, you know, some character, some little puckers here, some little things here. Um, I actually really like that. And so I'm not too, too concerned with that. 
So what I'll do now is I will go through and I, with my hot glue gun, am just going to run some hot glue all the way around where my fusible meets my fabric and I'm going to start to press that, okay? Where I have these little gaps, I might shoot some glue down in there just to kind of give it that extra hold. Something else that you can do if you're concerned about the hold is you can go ahead and put a ring of hot glue in here and kind of let that dry. That will serve as kind of a shelf to go um, right under your pin cushion. So that's also another option for you. I'll show you how that's done just so um, we've got that for purposes. My glue gun is so loved and so used. So I'm just going to take about an inch down. I'm really not even like trying to make it beautiful. I'm just trying to um, kind of put a ring of glue all the way around here just to, like I said, kind of serve as a little shelf. So I'm going to let that dry while I'm working on my other pieces and parts here. So now I'm going to take my, um, my pin cushion and I'm going to quickly run glue all the way around it and get it set inside there so that it can start to uh, dry. So I'm really, and at this point, I'm really going to push in quite a bit of glue, um, one, so it doesn't dry as quickly, uh, but two, so that I've got a good, really strong hold here. It never fails, y'all. I will burn myself 5,000 times before this project is over. Okay, so then at this point, see I told you, I'm gonna burn myself. I just push it in. And don't worry about all this extra glue that you see coming out and you know, on my finger, uh, because we can clean that up after really, really simply. So you're gonna push it in there and push it down to where you kind of like it. So mine, I just, it's so firm and I love that, that that happens because then as I start to stick my pins down in, I don't feel like I'm gonna push this thing through. So the shelf of hot glue kind of helps and then definitely the hot glue thick all the way around there is nice. So as this starts to dry, you can kind of pull off those pieces. Um, another trick that I think I saw another YouTuber uh, did, did she has an air gun, uh, and so she just took her air gun and she kind of got all the little hairs and things away from, from her hot glue gun project that she was working on. So that's really the base of our pin cushion is, I mean, as simple as that. I love this little rose. And you can make this puff up as much as you want to. It doesn't have to be flat like mine. Um, this one is really puffed up, so you can kind of see the difference here. Uh, well how puffed up that one is and how flat that one is so it's really all like I said from the beginning it is all personal preference so now you all um, it is really just decoration how do you want to decorate your little cup and saucer like I said I tend to stay focused on the cup then I move to the saucer then I put them together and kind of form my decorations after that so um, at this point, I'm just going to let you kind of see me decorate and how I decorate my cup. And then um, we'll kind of join at the end and I'll show you some different kind of out of the box thinking pin cushions that you can create.
guys this one turned out so much cuter than I could have imagined I decided to go very very simple so I only added just a few decorations lots of trim and I just wanted it to be really simple so what I did here is I pulled out some lace that I had for my stash and some pink pearls that I did not show in my materials and so um, I just had those in my stash so I pulled those out because I thought they would match really nicely so that kind of helped to fill these little gaps I had in the imperfections of my actual pin cushion and I think it makes it look rustic and really really cute um, I also feel like I'm gonna be pulling strands of hot glue off of it uh, from now until whenever my goodness okay so I added just this little lace around the mouth then I added some pom-pom um, garland right here those pink pearls added some nice little cute buttons here I have this little measuring tape that was in my great grandmother's sewing box and so little by little I've been cutting it uh, a little bit apart you'll see in our letters sometimes that you can see in our video we uh, cut some off to create those letters and so I've just been kind of cutting little bits off here and there to kind of um, coordinate those in little decorations in our in my sewing studio so I used that with some tiny red rickrack and some little buttons. I just wanted to keep it very simple with this one and so I think it's really cute. I went ahead, I'm being very careful, because I went ahead and used E6000 to glue this down. That does take about 24 hours to dry and so I'm just going to leave this on my desk uh, away from the three-year-old and um, let this dry overnight. And so. Um, Leave your comments down below. Let me know what you think if you kind of liked that process of me decorating. Um, I really like decorating and you'll see I hold, especially on the saucer, I hold several different types of trims around it. I uh, think I held up a lace, um, a wide rickrack. I mean, I use several different things. So just try, trial by error. I just want to hold it up there, see what it looks like, and then kind of make my decision from there. I even got tech guy involved on this one. So that was exciting for us. So uh, while I had the E6000 out, I went ahead and glued down my uh, teacup that came off from earlier. Again, if you don't have E6000, you can use hot glue. That's fine. Just know with the temperature change, it might um, come unglued or if you knock it off the table onto some carpet or anything like that, it might just easily pop off. So just kind of know that. I wanted to share one more thing with you. A lot of my vintage teacups I actually get from um, from like discount stores like Goodwill or um, Family Value or things like that um, that you can get for really, really inexpensive. And so I want you to think outside the box. What else could you make a pin cushion out of? One of my favorite little things is to do is to just go and browse the aisles and see what kitchen dishes can I use? Um, what dress forms can I use? Like if I found a little dress form once, I actually did make a dress form pin cushion. I found it on Pinterest. It was really simple to sew and make and I really liked it. The, uh, what I did for you guys today is I found a ramekin at Goodwill the last time I was there. I found a ramekin. It happened to be uh, half off so I think I paid 49 cents for it and so I made it into its own little pin cushion. This I used blues and pinks and I used those adorable little pins that we got in January's sew sampler box and so um, I used some little um, pom-pom garland again all around the side. I've got some Lori Holt scrap fabric at the top here. I use some Lori Holt fabric around the, or um, ribbon around the side and definitely those really cute little buttons that you saw me use today. So think outside the box. I made this one flat top because I used a more thick fusible batting and so I wanted to make this one a flat top because it is a ramekin. I thought it looked like a cute little dessert and so um I pulled this one out. Think outside the box. What else can you use? So thank you so much for joining us in the hive today. I hope that you all enjoyed this tutorial on the vintage teacup pin cushion. I cannot wait to see what you all make. So head on over to Instagram when you've got your pin cushion made, hashtag Kia B Quilting so I can keep up on what you're making. Thank you so much for joining us in the hive today and we hope that you all have a great week. Mm -hmm.